What's up guys? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, today I'm just gonna get right to it. Um, and as advertised, spend a little bit first um, hitting some highlights of uh, Jeffrey Cohen's blog post essay. Um, that is our first reading. And after uh, I respond to these sort of sets of questions, uh, we'll spend a few minutes uh, with uh, ways that we can apply uh, the ideas that he sets out, um, which will give you some sets of examples for what you can pursue in your first uh, poster assignment. So uh, one question that we can ask about this essay in its totality is, uh, according to Cohen, what are some ways we represent the future? So, um, of course, for him, the major way that we represent the future and um, uh, real target of his uh, critical critical inquiry is uh, through flood, rising waters, um, and drowning. Right. So he says uh, we're experts in imagining the end times. After four millennia of practice, crafting narratives of worldly obliteration comes easy. So the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is you know uh, the very oldest written text. Uh, about 5,000 years old, contains, uh, you know, a, a world ending in, in, in flood, um, and the, that um, text bears relation to, underwrites, influences um, the story that we find in the Old Testament, um, which again, Noah's story is one of our oldest stories and a story that we return to um, over and over again across a variety of traditions, right? So it's not only in the sort of Western um, canons, uh, you can also find it um, in the Islamic tradition, um, although with significantly different like uh, import, uh, which is all to say, uh, according to Cohen, uh, what is it about this image of a future uh, that's so radically different from the present as to be uh, choked up in terms of drowning, um, both in general and then specific to the moment that we find ourselves in, i.e. the Anthropocene. So again, Anthropocene is uh, a term that we're, that uh, folks in a bunch of different disciplines are starting to give to the period that we find ourselves in. That is, uh, naming an age in which man is the greatest uh, climatological geographical force of the era. Um, and so uh, why now, uh, in the age of these sort of cumulative effects of like human activity uh, that have imperiled uh, the earth, do we continue to return to this very old story? And then what are the ways um, across different media that that story falls out? So he says, secular apocalypse in the world, world of Lawrence Buell, the single most powerful uh, master metaphor that the contemporary environmental uh, imagination has at its disposal. We cannot not think in catastrophic terms. Um, so here are some sets of examples. Uh, so 2012, uh, is, you know, kind of blockbuster movie that projects um, Earth's end uh, in terms of flood and catastrophe. Uh, the response to that flood and catastrophe is, of course, like the building of these like impossibly huge arcs. Um, also, we might say uh, he works through a series of these like imaginative, uh, speculative, uh, design their posters, um, the first of which represents uh, a flooded Manhattan. Um, and then this one, um, sorry, uh, is a map, a length map that outlines of the submerged city streets are discernible beneath the waters, a reminder of what's lost. Um, Portland illustrates 250 feet above the flood, the city's transformed into a series of molded islands. Um, and then finally, this like pretty vivid image um, called Postcards from the Future. Um, it's part of like a larger series imagining, um, though 
not scientifically accurately what uh, major Amer or major world cities would look like uh, if the polar ice caps melted. Um, and so Cohen wants to say, um, we might also consider um, in contrast uh, this picture of flooded Katrina um, as uh, figures for thinking about what the future might look like given the situation that we find ourselves in vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Anthropocene. Um, okay, well, so what, right? Like, so why read what might otherwise be, um, this is a, a realistic um, or a speculative um, sets of imagery, um, And he says, he suggests that one reason to read these images as we do is it gives us an occasion to think about what figuring the future in terms of apocalypse um, does for us, right? So at the very beginning, he's going to say, um, if we continue to think about the world in terms of apocalypse, um, that causes humans um, to react in a couple of different ways. So on the one hand, we might react um, through resignation, right? Like apocalypse, what's it good for? On the one hand, um, nothing, right? So we might say if there's nothing um, to be done, um, then we might as well just um, make hay while the sun shines, right? So, um, where's that? Um, uh, let's see. If the world must terminate in fire or flood, the ecological devastation we foster through every cartridge meal uh, and, and vacation ceases to trouble, right? So if it's going to end anyway, just let it. He says, on the flip, um, uh, imagining the future in terms of catastrophe uh, inspires us to respond, and that one way that we respond is through... Uh, the building of arcs, right? So anyone who has yet seen the film knows that the world is ending, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, and to survive, we have to build these arcs. And so, um, like, so what? Um, what is it about uh, arc building, which is really like a metaphor for, um, excuse me, for preservation that Cohen is interested in interrogating? He says, on the one hand, um, of course, uh, archives or archivalism uh, is the very process by which the future is um, passed down from generation to generation, right? Thinking, for example, um, right, of a, a library of medical textbooks, right, is a good example of, so we like put all of our knowledge from one generation into medical textbooks and that those get handed down from generation to generation and that is a way that we like preserve on into the future uninterrupted uh, sets of human knowledge. So um, on one hand, of course, responding to the radical difference that is the future through preservation is super successful. We could say that with like all sorts of like conservation efforts, right? And if you're worried about for example, uh, the diminishing frog population. You want to collect all of the frogs, not in like Noah, two by two, put those in a zoo somewhere, right? So on the one hand, of course, archives are super successful and we need them. But on the flip, right, um, archives or archivalism has some, uh, have some drawbacks, right? So he wants to say this chapter contributes to a long history of me meditating upon the world left behind when we suppose a watery and inevitable uh, when we preserve the world for a small community, a tradition that crosses centuries and might be called an homage to Timothy Finley, not wanted on the voyage. We exclude mightily when we build an ark, erect a gated community, or construct a wall along a nation's border. Three versions of the same story, as if we could, like Noah, protect, uh, construct a protective chest in which to dwell, some architecture or shelter, um, an exclusion to hold against waves of water or of climate refugees, against violence, swift or slow. We imagine those barred from arc or enclave to be humans, albeit ones we refuse to call fellow. Missing from many contemporary accounts of an argument is the consideration of the preservability and companionship of not just the animals that arrive two by two in most versions of the Noah story, 
um, without which we would have no ecology, et cetera, et cetera. And so like uh, advantageous on the one hand, but definitely problematic on the other insofar as uh, by what measures are uh, that which is included within the ARC uh, determined, who makes that determination, right? So um, to what extent uh, are the measures for inclusion arbitrary and an expression of a singular point of view? Um, and this sort of uh, expression of a singular point of view uh, is a thing that binds um, this image this image and this image together, right? So we get this notion uh, to return once more to point of view. These maps of sinking cities enact what Donna Haraway has called the God trick, assuming a perspective that serenely uh, floats uh, above observed facts at such critical distance, embodied, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? So uh, one drawback to the production of the arc is the way in which the producer of the arc stands outside of what's being compiled, right? Um, another problem with the arc, right, is that uh, inclusion and exclusion is arbitrary, and anybody who's included um, or anything that's included is valued uh, over and against the thing that's excluded, which you can already see as um, being particularly dangerous, especially when you're drawing uh, lines around the human communities. Finally, um, you might suggest or you might think uh, a trouble, excuse me, uh, with... Uh, arcs or arc building is the ways in which it um, neglects or is blind to uh, that which is left behind, right? So um, even as uh, we produce or preserve uh, for the future um, the things, uh, people uh, that we thought about as not worth saving um, are um, no longer considered, but remain, right? Um, so by the end of this uh, essay, we get to this image um, that Cohen wants to focus on as like a kind of uh, set of imagery uh, that kind of redresses um, the problems with uh, arc and arc building, right? So how can you have both the affordances of collection, storage, display, um, but also amid, um, set amid its like potential drawbacks and complications, right? And so he says of this image that this is the kind of image that, mm, if, if nothing else, like breaks down uh, the illusion uh, that preservation is uh, uncomplicated um, or of an uncomplicated good, right? So one thing that he's going to say is, how do you tell the difference between saying this creature um, and this creature, right? Um, and it's nearly impossible to do so. Again, how do you tell the difference between um, the arc itself um, and the uh, crib or the bassinet um, that is like the root of the term arc to begin with? And so again, here's like a visual demonstration of um, what Cohen argues um, theoretically. Finally, this is my last before I stop, um, here is, uh, it's kind of hard to see, um, in the medieval tradition, um, the medievals were just as like enthusiastic about the Noah story as we are in the contemporary, um, and among their tradition they were really uh, interested in the ways in which, uh, even if the world, if the world was destroyed in um, in the deluge, right, in the great flood, how is it that the devil persists in, into the future, right, beyond the the, uh, the catastrophe of the flood? And so one story has it, or lots of stories, and this is a representation of that story, that the devil snuck in on the ark. And so I'll leave you with this. The final uh, challenge to an uncomplicated understanding of preservation or archive or, or, or uh, archivalism is the ways in which the thing that threatens the longevity of a society or an ecosystem uh, is not external but already on the inside and to um, project a future as catastrophic um, to to, to project uh, catastrophe or danger as external um, will always uh, ignore the ways in which 
the failure already exists like on the interior right so look to yourself so